What is going on, Commanders fans? Tristan Talking Sports back here with another video. And today, we're going to be previewing the Washington Commanders versus the Kansas City Chiefs preview of the Week 2 NFL preseason. Now, before we get into this video, make sure you guys go down, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. We are at about 19 subscribers, I believe. Um, Now, obviously, we were at 20, but some someone unsubscribed. I don't know. I don't know what that dude's doing, but it is what it is. All right, let me eat my ice. All right, we good. But anyways, I did take about four days off. Um, I just have not been feeling very good at all. Um, I've been very lightheaded, dizzy, tired. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to get blood test tomorrow. Hopefully, your boy will be all right. I think I am. Just need some probably extra vitamins or something. But let's let's get into this video. Um, obviously, the Commanders, we play the um, Kansas City Chiefs Saturday at 4 o'clock. Um, so that's in about, that's in pretty much exactly three days. It's 3 o'clock right now. So we got about 73 hours to the Washington Commanders kick off against the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, obviously, man... We did lose in a bad way to the Carolina Panthers. Uh, we lost by a score twenty three to twenty one. Um, now we were winning twenty one to twenty in the last two and a half minutes of the game, but then the Carolina um, Panthers kick returner returned it to about the thirty three yard line. So then obviously Matt Corral, he looked terrible all game. He looked like shit. Um, but we we pretty much just handed the Carolina Panthers um, the game. You know, so they got the ball at the 33. I believe it was like third and 14 or something. And then we absolutely decked Matt Corral. We got the fumble. We recovered it. And then I see a flag. And I'm like, oh, it's probably just holding on the Panthers. You know, we won the game. Let's go. But then they call. I see a flag. And they call illegal hands to the face. Like 20 or 30 yards down the field. <clears throat> Um, so that gave the Panthers an automatic first down when we should have won the game, but our defense was absolutely undisciplined. So that was frustrating to see. And then, so they got, so then they had first and 10 at like the 48 or something. Um, and then it was like another third and long and it looked like we were about to get a sack, but then we grabbed the, Matt Corral's face mask. His helmet came off, they blew the play dead, like all the face mask on the commanders so then that pretty much put them at like the 30s no nah, i think that put them at like the 29 um of washington so they were already in field goal range they just ran the ball got a few yards um they kicked like a 45 yard field goal to take the lead with like 24 seconds left um and then sam how we weren't able to get down the field um 24 seconds was not enough for us to get um, down the field and kick a field goal. Um, and I, like, I, I just didn't like what the refs, um, I think it was like 12 seconds left, and the Panthers jumped off sides. Um, we snapped the ball, right? We threw, I think it was an incompletion. And then they threw the flag after, so they called off sides basically after the play. So five seconds already ran off the clock. <clears throat> um, after the play, so we only had seven seconds left. They called off sides, but obviously it's only five yards, and they didn't give us the time back. They didn't give us five seconds back. Now, if, if it's off sides, they should throw the flag when he jumps off sides, but you get five more yards, and no time uh, comes off the clock. But since they jumped off sides, they made us, we had to snap, we snapped the ball, threw an incompletion, then they threw the flag, um, after five seconds, came off the clock. I, I just don't understand that, man. That was just bad officiating by the refs. Um, now, I'm not going to blame that call in the game. I mean, obviously, the reason we lost because the defense was undisciplined. Um, it's just frustrating because I feel like we just handed the Carolina Panthers a game. Um, you know, Matt Corral was not going to beat us. Um, we beat ourselves. That's really how we lost that game. That's the only, that's the only way we were going to lose that game, but it, it is what it is. Carson Wentz was 10 for 13, 74 yards. I like the way he looked. Antonio Gibson, man. Antonio freaking Gibson. Antonio fucking Gibson. What the hell are you doing? Man? I, I I might go. I'm not going to try to go on a rant about Antonio Gibson. I, I love Antonio Gibson. 
but his fumbling problem is an issue, okay? Um, we saw it a lot last year. Um, he costed us some games with his fumbling. I remember he fumbled against the Chargers. He fumbled against the Panthers. When we were about to play. How many? I think he had like seven fumbles last year. Something like that. Maybe he had more. I don't know. But he fumbled on his second carry against the Carolina Panthers. I think we were down 3 nothing, right? And Carson Wentz's second drive because we went three and out the first drive. Because Carson Wentz threw a decent ball to, um, who was it, Hodges. And he dropped the ball. It was a tough catch. It was contested. But, I mean, that was pretty much the only, no one else was open. So that's the only throw Carson Wentz really had that was kind of open. And he dropped it. Um, so obviously we went three and out. And we were like, all right, Carson Wentz is going to get back on the field. Let's have a better drive. Then he gives it to Anthony Gibson. And Antonio Gibson fumbles. The Panthers recover it. They end up get, getting a touchdown because they had the ball at like the 15-yard line. Sam Darnold threw a touchdown. The Panthers go up 10-0. Then we end up benching Antonio Gibson. And then we put Brian Robinson Jr. in. Brian Robinson looked great. He scored the first touchdown in Washington Commanders history. The dude looked like an absolute stud. He was hitting his holes. He looked so much more explosive than Antonio Gibson. And he ended up getting a touchdown. I mean, at this point, man, Ryan Robinson might have to be the running back one. Now, I mean, obviously, I don't think it should just be Ryan Robinson um, getting all the snaps. I think Antonio Gibson and Brian Robinson are better as a duo. But I don't know, man. But anyways, I did hear that Antonio Gibson is actually, I think he was moved to the third string. And he's practicing with the with special teams. Which kind of confused me, man. Like, damn, I guess they're they're that tired of him fumbling, man. Uh, so that means Brian Robinson and J.D. McKissick are right now ahead of Antonio Gibson. So Antonio Gibson, man, if he wants to get his starting job back, he needs to have a good next two games. Um, because right now, it's, he's not cutting it, man. He can't be fumbling the ball every time. He needs to, damn, get this shit straight, man. Because I love Antonio Gibson. His potential is through the roof. He's a good running back when he can hold on to the football. But he has not been able to do that lately. He has not been hitting his holes. He's been getting stuffed. It's just frustrating to see because this dude looked amazing his rookie year. He had 11 touchdowns. He was running all over the Cowboys. I know they had the worst defense. But he was running all over everybody. He was running all over the Eagles. He was running all over the Giants. Well, we did get sweeped by the Giants. But, I mean, like I said, he, he was dominating last year. He had 11 touchdowns um, in his rookie campaign. And last year, what did he have? Like seven to a drop, about four touchdowns. And the dude had a complete fumbling issue. And it's continued to this season. I thought, man, we all, I, saw him f I, I saw him fumbling in preseason. I was like, oh, I, it'll be all right. Um, and then I see him doing it in the game. I'm like, all right, it's it's still an issue. Um, it's it's still a really bad issue. We need to get Antonio Gibson out of here. Put put Brian Robinson in. That's what I was saying when he fumbled the ball. I was like, just just get Brian Robinson Jr. in the game. Um, I've seen enough of Antonio Gibson. Now I'm not I'm not ready to give up on Antonio Gibson. I know he has the potential to be a top eight running back in this league, a, a top five back. Um, if he can reach his full potential, but I don't really see that anymore. The way he's fumbling the football. But I don't know, man. He's gonna have to get his, his stuff together. But yeah, that's enough on Antonio Gibson. Um Taylor Heineke, I mean, we don't really have to talk much about him. It's whatever. He was four for nine, twenty one yards. Now I went back and watched some film about two days ago. Um I was just trying to see what reads our quarterbacks were making. I was trying to see, like, what they can prove on and stuff. And so Taylor Heineke, right? This is the ball. He threw an interception, obviously. I think it was 10-6. to 6. This was after we scored a touchdown. Um, Carson Wentz led a touchdown drive. Him and Brian Robinson. Um, so, yeah, by the way, Carson Wentz, he looked good, man. We um, He had three drives. We scored a touchdown on his third drive. And then, I don't think, and then after we scored a touchdown, Rivera liked how he moved the ball, and then he thought that was enough to put Heineke in and give Heineke a chance to do something. Um, 
But Taylor Heineke, he he had a good start to the drive, but then he showed why he's just not an NFL starting quarterback. Man, I mean, it's just so annoying because like he just can't make all the throw. Like he's just not. He can't consistently make throws for a whole drive. That's why we always had to settle for feet. That's why our offense was so limited because Taylor Heineke makes some good throws uh, and you're driving, right? You keep getting the first downs, but then once you get down to like the 20-yard line, Taylor Heineke just can't make those tight throws, um, which is really frustrating. But you saw with Carson Wentz, that dude can consistently make throws throughout a course of a drive and he can lead touchdown drives. Um, but Taylor Heineke, he probably completed his, what, first four passes and then I think he threw he had he had incompletions on like the like the rest of his five on like five straight passes um he he, he only had nine pass attempts he was four for nine so he completed his first four um his last five were incompletions um but back back to what I was saying the interception that he threw um he had JD McKissick I believe yeah it was JD McKissick or maybe it wasn't no, I don't. I don't even know. It, it was some. It was some bad, but um, I think it was like Jamal. Will, I don't even know. But um, he had he had a check down wide open. I don't even think the um Panthers corner was even ten yards of him. He was probably like twelve yards off of him, and Taylor Heineke didn't even look at him, and he just sailed it um over uh. I don't, I don't even know. He's like a third string, whatever. But he sailed, he overthrew a Washington receiver. Um, they end up diving, getting a pick, um, and Taylor Heineke gets picked off. Um, it's just frustrating because when you go back and watch the film, Taylor Heineke just did not scan the whole field. He literally had an easy uh, check down that would have been a first down if, if he just made that throw. Instead, he, choos he chooses to... Uh, try to force something 20 yards down the field, um, a throw that he can't make, he always overthrows it, and it gets picked off. As a problem with Taylor Heineke, his decision-making is awful at times. Awful. Um, that's why Sam Howell will be, he'll be taking Taylor Heineke's QB2 spot in a heartbeat. And, you know, um, I think, I, I've seen enough to put Sam Howell at the number two spot, but that's just me. But, um, Terry McCoy. Now, the thing that I didn't necessarily love that Carson Wentz did is his main target was Hodges. It feels like he was just throwing it to him on every play. He wasn't using the good receivers that we had in Curtis Samuel, Jahan, and Terry. Um, now, he had one nice completion to Terry for like 13, 14 yards. Um, he, he, he actually got, he was throwing to Curtis Samuel a decent amount. I liked the screen pass. They had a Curtis Samuel. Curtis Samuel looked pretty good. Had some nice completions over the middle to him. Um, now, they did, um, they threw one deep ball to Jahan Dotson, which I, I was glad to see, but Carson Wentz just overthrew him a little bit. Um, Jahan Dotson got great separation. Um, and it, I think it wouldn't have been a touchdown, but it would, he would have been like a, he probably would have been down at like a 20 of the Panthers, but Carson Wentz overthrew him, um, which is all right. I mean, that's, you know, it's preseason. Might as well go out, air it out. If you overthrow him, it's, it's all good. But um, I liked what I saw out of Carson. I don't like how he was just targeting, uh, like, four-string tight end the whole time. I think he, he should have used our receivers more. But, you know, I think he's still learning the guy, still trying to get connections with Terry, Curtis, and Jahan. You know, he has a really good connection with Jahan, actually. You know, training camp, you know, he's had a really good connection with him. Him and Terry are starting to grow. Um, and I'm like, what he's doing with Curtis Sam. But, um, let's see, who who, who else? The, oh, the defensive line. The defensive line looked a lot better. You know, it seems like this offense is was, I mean, sorry, defense got a little bit of a new look. Um, they looked a lot better. The defensive line was getting tons of pressure. We were getting to the QB a good amount. Um, now, we, ju we just got to get better at, you know, bringing the quarterback down. There was a time where we should have had an easy sack against Baker Mayfield, and he kind of shook out of it, was able to get, like, three yards, and that set up a third and, like, short 
for the Carolina Panthers, which, which can't happen. You know, we got to bring them down. But I'm happy with the pressure that they got. Um, You know, so I think, you know, Jack Del Rio is definitely changing up the scheme a little bit. Um, it was kind of a new look on defense, and I was glad to see that. Um, it looked a lot better. But, yeah, um, defensive line, the secondary, Kendall Fuller, was kind of getting beat. Um, you know, there was a, I think it was a Sam Donald touchdown to make it 10 nothing. Kendall Fuller got absolutely toasted for a touchdown. I think he was trying to cut the receiver in, and the receiver ended up going around him. Touchdown. Um, Kendall Fuller, he gets beat like that a lot, man. He's got to. He's got to tighten up. He's got to clean that up. He cannot get beat like that this year. Um, we're going to need Kendall Fuller to step up because he's going to be a huge part of this defense. But, yeah, that's all I got. Thank you guys for watching, um, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.